The energy policy of India is largely defined by the country expanding energy deficit and increased focus on developing alternative sources of energy, particularly nuclear, solar and wind energy. India ranks 81 position in overall energy self-sufficiency at 66% in 2014. The primary energy consumption in India is the third biggest after China and USA with 5.6% global share in 2017. The total primary energy consumption from crude oil, 221.1 MTOE, 29.34%, natural gas, 46.6 MTOE, 6.18%, coal, 424 MTOE, 56.26%, nuclear energy, 8.7 MTOE, 1.15%, hydroelectricity, 30.7 MTOE. 4.07% and renewable power 21.8 MTOE 2.89% is 753.7 MTOE excluding traditional biomass use in the calendar year 2017 in 2017 India S net imports are nearly 198.8 million tons of crude oil and its products, 25.7 MTOE of LNG and 129.8 MTOE coal totaling to 354.3 MTOE of primary energy which is equal to 47% of total primary energy consumption. About 75% of India's electricity generation is from fossil fuels. India is surplus in electricity generation and also marginal exporter of electricity in 2017. India is largely dependent on fossil fuel imports to meet its energy demands. By 2030, India's dependence on energy imports is expected to exceed 53% of the country's total energy consumption. In 2009–10, the country imported 159.26 million tonnes of crude oil which amounts to 80% of its domestic crude oil consumption and 31% of the country's total imports are oil imports. By the end of calendar year 2015, India has become a power surplus country with huge power generation capacity idling for want of electricity demand. India ranks second after China in renewables production with 208.7 MTOE in 2016. In 2015 16, the per capita energy consumption is 22.042 GJ, excluding traditional biomass use, and the energy intensity of the Indian economy is 0.271 MJ per INR. 65 Due to rapid economic expansion, India has one of the world's fastest growing energy markets and is expected to be the second largest contributor to the increase in global energy demand by 2035, accounting for 18% of the rise in global energy consumption. Given India's growing energy demands and limited domestic oil and gas reserves, the country has ambitious plans to expand its renewable and most worked out nuclear power program. India has the world's fourth largest wind power market and also plans to add about 100,000 megawatts of solar power capacity by 2020. India also envisages to increase the contribution of nuclear power to overall electricity generation capacity from 4.2% to 9% within 25 years. The country has five nuclear reactors under construction third highest in the world and plans to construct 18 additional nuclear reactors second highest in the world by 2025. Indian solar power PV tariff has fallen to 2 rupees and 44 paise 3.4 US per kilowatt hour in May 2017 which is lower than any other type of power generation in India. In the year 2016, the levelized tariff in US dollar for solar PV electricity has fallen below 2.42 cents per kilowatt hour. Also the international tariff of solar thermal storage power plants has fallen to $6.30 per kilowatt hour which is cheaper than fossil fuel plants. The cheaper hybrid solar power mix of solar PV and solar thermal storage power need not depend on costly and polluting coal, gas-fired power generation for ensuring stable grid operation. 
Solar electricity price is going to become the benchmark price for deciding the other fuel prices petroleum products, natural gas, biogas, LNG, CNG, LPG, coal, lignite, biomass, etc. based on their ultimate use and advantages. Topic. Oil and gas Topic. India ranks third in oil consumption with 212.7 million tonnes in 2016 after USA and China. During the calendar year 2015, India imported 195.1 million tonnes crude oil and 23.3 million tonnes refined petroleum products and exported 55 million tonnes refined petroleum products. India has built surplus world-class refining capacity using imported crude oil for exporting refined petroleum products. The net imports of crude oil is lesser by one-fourth after accounting exports and imports of refined petroleum products. Natural gas production was 29.2 billion cubic meters and consumption 50.6 billion cubic meters during the calendar year 2015. During the financial year 2012-13, the production of crude oil is 37.86 million tons and 40,679 million standard cubic meters nearly 26.85 million tons natural gas. The net import of crude oil and petroleum products is 146.70 million tons worth of 5,611 rupees and 40 paise billions. This includes 9.534 million tons of LNG imports worth of 282 rupees and 15 paise billions. Internationally, LNG price 1 MMBTU of LNG topic 0.1724 barrels of crude oil 24.36 cubic meters of natural gas 29.2 liters diesel 21.3 kilograms LPG is fixed below crude oil price in terms of heating value. LNG is slowly gaining its role as direct-use fuel in road and marine transport without regasification. By the end of June 2016, LNG price has fallen by nearly 50% below its oil parity price making it more economical fuel than diesel, gas oil in transport sector. In 2012-13, India consumed 15.744 million tonnes petrol and 69.179 million tonnes diesel which are mainly produced from imported crude oil at huge foreign exchange outgo. Use of natural gas for heating, cooking and electricity generation is not economical as more and more locally produced natural gas will be converted into LNG for use in transport sector to reduce crude oil imports. In addition to the conventional natural gas production, coal gasification, coal bed methane, coal mine methane and biogas digesters, renewable natural gas will also become source of LNG forming decentralized base for production of LNG to cater to the widely distributed demand. There is possibility to convert most of the heavy duty vehicles including diesel driven rail engines into LNG fueled vehicles to reduce diesel consumption drastically with operational cost and least pollution benefits. Also, the break-even price at user end for switching from imported coal to LNG in electricity generation is estimated near $6 per MMBTU. The advent of cheaper marine CNG transport will restrict LNG use in high-end transport sector to replace costly liquid fuels leaving imported CNG use for other needs. As the marine CNG transport is economical for medium distance transport and has fast unloading flexibility at many ports without costly unloading facilities, they have become alternate solution to submarine gas pipelines. The state owned Oil and Natural Gas Corporation ONGC acquired shares in oil fields in countries like Sudan, Syria, Iran, and Nigeria, investments that have led to diplomatic tensions with the United States. Because of political instability in the Middle East and increasing domestic demand for energy, India is keen on decreasing its dependency on OPEC to meet its oil demand, and increasing its energy security. Several Indian oil companies, primarily led by ONGC and Reliance Industries, have started a massive hunt for oil in several regions in India, including Rajasthan, Krishna Godavari Basin, and northeastern Himalayas. India has nearly 63 TCF technically recoverable resources of shale gas, which can meet all its needs for 20 years if exploited. India is developing an offshore gas field in Mozambique. The proposed Iran-Pakistan-India pipeline is a part of India's plan to meet its increasing energy demand. Coal 
Topic. India has the world's fourth largest coal reserves. In India, coal is the bulk of primary energy contributor with 56.90% share equivalent to 411.9 MTOE in 2016. India is the third top coal producer in 2013 with 7.6% production share of coal including lignite in the world. Top 5 hard and brown coal producing countries in 2013 2012 are million tons, China 3,680 3,645, United States 893 922, India 605 607, Australia 478 453, and Indonesia 421 386. However, India ranks fifth in global coal production at 228 MTOE in 2013 when its inferior quality coal tonnage is converted into tons of oil equivalent. Coal-fired power plants account for 59% of India's installed electricity capacity. After electricity production, coal is also used for cement production in substantial quantity. In 2013, India imported nearly 95 MTOE of steam coal and coking coal which is 29% of total consumption to meet the demand in electricity, cement and steel production. Pet coke availability, at cheaper price to local coal, is replacing coal in cement plants. Gasification of coal or lignite or pet coke produces syngas or coal gas or coke oven gas which is a mixture of hydrogen, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide gases. Coal gas can be converted into synthetic natural gas SNG by using fischer tropsch process at low pressure and high temperature. Coal gas can also be produced by underground coal gasification where the coal deposits are located deep in the ground or uneconomical to mine the coal. CNG and LNG are emerging as economical alternatives to diesel oil with the escalation in international crude oil prices. Synthetic natural gas production technologies have tremendous scope to meet the transport sector requirements fully using the locally available coal in India. Dankuni Coal Complex is producing syngas which is piped to the industrial users in Calcutta. Many coal-based fertilizer plants which are shut down can also be retrofitted economically to produce SNG as LNG and CNG fetch good price by substituting imports. Recently, Indian government fixed the natural gas price at producer end as $5.61 per MMBTU on net calorific value NCV basis which is at par with the estimated SNG price from coal. Biofuels <inaudible> 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 Gasification of biomass yields wood gas or syngas which can be converted into substitute natural gas by methanation. Nearly 750 million tons of non-edible biomass is available annually in India which can be put to higher value addition use and substitute imported crude oil, coal, LNG, urea fertilizer, nuclear fuels, etc. It is estimated that renewable and carbon neutral biomass resources of India can replace present consumption of all fossil fuels when used productively. Huge quantity of imported coal is being used in pulverized coal fired power stations. Raw biomass can not be used in the pulverized coal mills as they are difficult to grind into fine powder due to caking property of raw biomass. However, biomass can be used after torrefaction in the pulverized coal mills for replacing imported coal. Northwest and southern regions can replace imported coal use with torrefied biomass where surplus agriculture, crop residual biomass is available. Biomass power plants can also get extra income by selling the Renewable Purchase Certificates RPC. .In cement production, carbon neutral biomass is being used to replace coal for reducing carbon footprint drastically. Biogas or natural gas or methane produced from farm, agro, crop, domestic waste can also be used for producing protein-rich feed for cattle, fish, poultry, pet animals economically by cultivating Methylococcus capsulatus bacteria culture in a decentralized manner near to the rural, consumption areas with tiny land and water footprint. 
with the availability of CO2 gas as by-product from these units, cheaper production cost of algae oil from algae or spirulina particularly in tropical countries like India would displace the prime position of crude oil in near future. India's three oil marketing companies OMCs are currently setting up 12 second-generation ethanol plants across the country which will collect agriculture waste from farmers and convert it into bioethanol. The former president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, was a strong advocate of Jatrapa cultivation for production of biodiesel. He said that out of the 6,00,000 km squared of waste land that is available in India over 3,00,000 km squared is suitable for Jatrapa cultivation. Once the plant is grown, it has a useful lifespan of several decades. During its life Jatrapa requires very little water when compared to other cash crops. A plan for supplying incentives to encourage the use of Jatrapa has been colored with green stripes. Nuclear power Topic. India boasts a quickly advancing and active nuclear power program. It is expected to have 20 gigawatts of nuclear capacity by 2020, though it currently stands as ninth in the world in terms of nuclear capacity. An Achilles heel of the Indian nuclear power program, however, is the fact that India is not a signatory of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. This has many times in its history prevented it from obtaining nuclear technology vital to expanding its nuclear industry. Another consequence of this is that much of its program has been domestically developed much like its nuclear weapons program. The United States-India Peaceful Atomic Energy Cooperation Act seems to be a way to get access to advanced nuclear technologies for India. India has been using imported enriched uranium and is under International Atomic Energy Agency IEA safeguards, but it has developed various aspects of the nuclear fuel cycle to support its reactors. Development of select technologies has been strongly affected by limited imports. Use of heavy water reactors has been particularly attractive for the nation because it allows uranium to be burnt with little to no enrichment. India has also done a great amount of work in the development of a thorium-centered fuel cycle. While uranium deposits in the nation are extremely limited, there are much greater reserves of thorium, and it could provide hundreds of times the energy with the same mass of fuel. The fact that thorium can theoretically be utilized in heavy water reactors has tied the development of the two. A prototype reactor that would burn uranium-plutonium fuel while irradiating a thorium blanket is under construction at the madras Kalpakam Atomic Power Station. Uranium used for the weapons program has been separate from the power program using uranium from scant indigenous reserves. Hydroelectricity <inaudible> 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 India is endowed with economically exploitable and viable hydro potential assessed to be about 125,570 MW at 60% capacity factor. India ranked fourth globally by underutilized hydro power potential. In addition, 6,780 MW in terms of installed capacity from small, mini, and micro hydro schemes have been assessed. Also, 56 sites for pumped storage schemes with an aggregate installed capacity of 94,000 MW have been identified for catering to peak electricity demand and water pumping for irrigation needs. It is the most widely used form of renewable energy but the economically exploitable hydro power potential keeps on varying due to technological developments and the comparable cost of electricity generation from other sources. The hydroelectric potential of India ranks fifth in terms of exploitable hydro potential on global scenario. The installed capacity of hydro power is 45,315 MW as of 31 May 2018. India ranks sixth in hydroelectricity generation globally after China, Canada, Brazil, USA and Russia. During the year 2017-18, the total hydroelectricity generation in India is 126.123 billion kWh which works out to 24,000 MW at 60% capacity factor. Till now, hydroelectricity sector is dominated by the state and central government owned companies but this sector is going to grow faster with the participation of private sector for developing the hydro potential located in the Himalaya mountain ranges including northeast of India. 
However the hydro power potential in central India forming part of Godavari, Mahanadi and Narmada river basins has not yet been developed on major scale due to potential opposition from the tribal population. Pumped storage schemes are perfect centralized peaking power stations for the load management in the electricity grid. Pumped storage schemes would be in high demand for meeting peak load demand and storing the surplus electricity as India graduates from electricity deficit to electricity surplus. They also produce secondary, seasonal power at no additional cost when rivers are flooding with excess water. Storing electricity by other alternative systems such as batteries, compressed air storage systems, etc. is more costlier than electricity production by standby generator. India has already established nearly 6,800 MW pumped storage capacity which is part of its installed hydro power plants. <laughs> Wind power India has the fourth largest installed wind power capacity in the world. As of 31 December 2017, the installed capacity of wind power was 32,848 MW an increase of 4,148 MW over the previous year wind power accounts nearly 10% of India's total installed power generation capacity and generated 52.666 billion kWh in the fiscal year 2017-18 which is nearly 3% of total electricity generation. The capacity utilization factor is nearly 16% in the fiscal year 2017-18. The Ministry of New and Renewable Energy MNRE of India has announced a revised estimation of the potential wind power resource excluding offshore wind power potential from 49,130 megawatts assessed at 50 meters hub heights to 102,788 megawatts assessed at 80 meters hub height at 15% capacity factor. Solar energy India's solar energy insulation is about 5,000 tkwh per year i.e. approximately 600 terawatts, far more than its current total primary energy consumption. India's long-term solar potential could be unparalleled in the world because it has the ideal combination of both high solar insulation and a big potential consumer base density. With a major section of its citizens still surviving off-grid, India's grid system is considerably underdeveloped. Availability of cheap solar can bring electricity to people, and bypass the need of installation of expensive grid lines. Also a major factor influencing a region. S energy intensity is the cost of energy consumed for temperature control. Since cooling load requirements are roughly in phase with the sun's intensity, cooling from intense solar radiation could make perfect energy economic sense in the subcontinent, whenever the required technology becomes competitively cheaper. Installation of solar power PV plants require nearly two. 0 hectares 5 acres land per megawatt capacity which is similar to coal-fired power plants when life cycle coal mining, consumptive water storage and ash disposal areas are also accounted and hydro power plants when submergence area of water reservoir is also accounted. 1.6 million megawatts capacity solar plants can be installed in India on its 1% land 32,000 square km. There are vast tracts of land suitable for solar power in all parts of India exceeding 8% of its total area which are unproductive barren and devoid of vegetation. Part of wastelands km when installed with solar power plants can produce 2,400 billion kWh of electricity two times the total generation in 2013-14 with land productivity, yield of 0.9 million rupees per acre 3 rupees per kWh price which is at par with many industrial areas and many times more than the best productive irrigated agriculture lands. Moreover, these solar power units are not dependent on supply of any raw material and are self-productive. There is unlimited scope for solar electricity to replace all fossil fuel energy requirements natural gas, coal, lignite and crude oil if all the marginally productive lands are occupied by solar power plants in future. 
The solar power potential of India can meet perennially to cater per capita energy consumption at par with USA, Japan for the peak population in its demographic transition. Solar thermal power The installed capacity of commercial solar thermal power plants in India is 227.5 MW with 50 MW in Andhra Pradesh and 177.5 MW in Rajasthan. Solar thermal plants are emerging as cheaper US per kilowatt hour and clean load following power plants compared to fossil fuel power plants. They can cater the load demand perfectly and work as base load power plants when the extracted solar energy is found excess in a day. Proper mix of solar thermal and solar PV can fully match the load fluctuations without the need of costly battery storage. Synergy with irrigation water pumping and hydro power stations the major disadvantage of solar power PV type only is that it can not produce electricity during the nighttime and cloudy daytime also. In India, this disadvantage can be overcome by installing pumped storage hydroelectricity stations. Ultimate electricity requirement for river water pumping excluding ground water pumping is 570 billion kilowatt hours to pump 1 cubic meter of water for each square meter area by 125 meters height on average for irrigating 140 million hectares of net sown area 42% of total land for 3 crops in a year. This is achieved by utilizing all the usable river waters by interlinking Indian rivers. These river water pumping stations would also be envisaged with pumped storage hydroelectricity features to generate electricity when necessary to stabilize the grid. Also, all existing and future hydro power stations can be expanded with additional pumped storage hydroelectricity units to cater nighttime electricity consumption. Most of the ground water pumping power can be met directly by solar power during daytime. To achieve food security, India needs to achieve water security which is possible only by energy security for harnessing its water resources, electric vehicles The retail prices of petrol and diesel are high in India to make electricity-driven vehicles more economical as more and more electricity is generated from solar energy in near future without appreciable environmental effects. During the year 2013, many IPPs offered to sell solar power below 6 rupees and 50 paise per kilowatt hour to feed into the low voltage. The retail price of diesel is 53.00 rs liter in 2012-13. The affordable electricity retail price 860 kilocalories per kilowatt hour at 75% input electricity to shaft power efficiency to replace diesel lower heating value 8572 kilocalories liter at 40% fuel energy to crank shaft efficiency is 9 rupees and 97 paise per kilowatt hour the retail price of petrol is 75 rupees per liter in 2012-13 the affordable electricity retail price 860 kilocalories per kilowatt hour at 75% input electricity to shaft power efficiency to replace petrol lower heating value 7693 kilocalories liter at 33% fuel energy to crank shaft efficiency is 19 rupees and 6 paise per kilowatt hour in 2012-13, India consumed 15.744 million tonnes petrol and 69.179 million tonnes diesel which are mainly produced from imported crude oil at huge foreign exchange outgo. V2G is also feasible with electricity-driven vehicles to contribute for catering to the peak load in the electricity grid. The electricity-driven vehicles would become popular in future when its energy storage, battery technology becomes more compact, lesser density, longer-lasting and maintenance-free. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hydrogen energy <inaudible> Hydrogen energy program started in India after joining the IPHE International Partnership for Hydrogen Economy in the year 2003. There are 19 other countries including Australia, United States, UK, Japan, etc. This global partnership helps India to set up commercial use of hydrogen gas as an energy source. Ministry of New and Renewable Energy MNRE is the focal government agency associated with hydrogen energy development in India. Hydrogen is a carbon neutral fuel. 
Solar electricity prices in India have already fallen below the affordable price, approximately equals 5 Indian rupees per kWh to generate 0.041 pounds kWh hydrogen, which is equivalent to 0.071 liters of petrol in terms of lower heating value, to make hydrogen economical fuel by sourcing from electrolysis of water to replace petrol gasoline as transport fuel. Vehicles with fuel cell technology based on hydrogen gas are nearly twice more efficient compared to diesel, petrol-fueled engines. A luxury hydrogen fuel cell car generates 1 litre of bottled quality drinking water for every 10 km ride which is a significant by-product. Any medium or heavy-duty vehicle can be retrofitted into fuel cell vehicle as its system power density watts, liter, and system-specific power watts per kilogram are comparable with that of internal combustion engine. The cost and durability of fuel cell engines with economies of scale production line are comparable with the petrol diesel engines. The excess power generation capacity available in India is nearly 500 billion units per year presently, and another 75,000 megawatts conventional power generating capacity is in pipeline, excluding the targeted 175,000 megawatts renewable power by 2022. The hydrogen fuel generated by 500 billion units of electricity can replace all diesel and petrol consumed by heavy and medium duty vehicles in India completely obviating the need of crude oil imports for internal consumption. Converting petrol, diesel driven road vehicles into fuel cell electric vehicles on priority would save the huge import cost of crude oil and transform the stranded electricity infrastructure into productive assets with major boost to the overall economic growth. Topic. Electricity as substitute to imported LPG and kerosene Topic. The net import of LPG is 6.093 million tonnes and the domestic consumption is 13.568 million tonnes with 41,546 crore rupees subsidy to the domestic consumers in 2012-13. The LPG import content is nearly 40% of total consumption in India. The affordable electricity retail price 860 kilocalories per kilowatt hour at 90% heating efficiency to replace LPG lower heating value 11000 kilocalories per kilogram at 75% heating efficiency in domestic cooking is 6 rupees and 47 paise per kilowatt hour when the retail price of LPG cylinder is 1000 rupees without subsidy with 14 2 kilograms LPG content Replacing LPG consumption with electricity reduces its imports substantially. The domestic consumption of kerosene is 7.349 million tonnes with 30,151 crore rupees subsidy to the domestic consumers in 2012-13. The subsidised retail price of kerosene is 13 rupees and 69 paise per litre whereas the export-import price is 48 rupees per litre. The affordable electricity retail price 860 kilocalories per kilowatt hour at 90% heating efficiency to replace kerosene lower heating value 8240 kilocalories liter at 75% heating efficiency in domestic cooking is 6 rupees per kilowatt hour when kerosene retail price is 48 rupees per liter without subsidy. During the year 2013-14, the plant load factor PLF of coal-fired thermal power stations is only 65.43% whereas these stations can run above 85% PLF comfortably provided there is adequate electricity demand in the country. The additional electricity generation at 85% PLF is nearly 240 billion units which is adequate to replace all the LPG and kerosene consumption in domestic sector. The incremental cost of generating additional electricity is only their coal fuel cost which is less than 3 rupees per kilowatt hour. Enhancing the PLF of coal-fired stations and encouraging domestic electricity consumers to substitute electricity in place of LPG and kerosene in household cooking, would reduce the government subsidies and idle capacity of thermal power stations can be put to use economically. The domestic consumers who are willing to surrender the subsidized LPG, kerosene permits or eligible for subsidized LPG, kerosene permits, may be given free electricity connection and subsidized electricity tariff. During the year 2014, IPPs are offering to sell solar power below 5 rupees and 50 paise per kilowatt hour to feed into the high voltage grid. 
This price is below the affordable electricity tariff for the solar power to replace LPG and kerosene use after including subsidy on LPG and kerosene in domestic sector. Two-wheelers and three-wheelers consume 62% and 6% of petrol respectively in India. The saved LPG, autogas replaced by electricity in domestic sector can be used by two- and three-wheelers with operational cost and least pollution benefits. By the middle of 2016, LPG spot prices have fallen below crude oil parity price in terms of heat content one barrel crude oil is equal to 123.5 kg of LPG due to LPG glut in the market instead of using LPG as heating fuel in domestic sector. For higher end usage, LPG can be also converted into alkylate which is a premium gasoline blending stock because it has exceptional anti-knock properties and gives clean burning. Topic power to food topic The methane, natural gas generated from water with electricity, can be utilized to produce protein-rich feed for fish, poultry, cattle which is known as power to food topic Energy trading with neighboring countries topic The per capita electricity consumption is low compared to many countries despite cheaper electricity tariff in India. Despite low electricity per capita consumption in India, the country is going to achieve surplus electricity generation during the 12th plan 2012 to 2017 period provided its coal production and transport infrastructure is developed adequately. India has been exporting electricity to Bangladesh and Nepal and importing excess electricity in Bhutan. Surplus electricity can be exported to the neighboring countries in return for natural gas supplies from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Myanmar. Bangladesh, Myanmar and Pakistan are producing substantial natural gas and using for electricity generation purpose. Bangladesh, Myanmar and Pakistan produce 55 million cubic meters per day MCMD, 9 MCMD and 118 MCMD out of which 20 MCMD, 1.4 MCMD and 34 MCMD are consumed for electricity generation respectively. Whereas the natural gas production in India is not even adequate to meet its non-electricity requirements. Bangladesh, Myanmar and Pakistan have proven reserves of 200 billion cubic meters BCM, 1200 BCM and 500 BCM respectively. There is ample opportunity for mutually beneficial trading in energy resources with these countries. India can supply its surplus electricity to Pakistan and Bangladesh in return for the natural gas imports by gas pipelines. Similarly India can develop on boot basis hydro power projects in Bhutan, Nepal and Myanmar. India can also enter into long-term power purchase agreements with China for developing the hydro power potential in Brahmaputra river basin of Tibet region. India can also supply its surplus electricity to Sri Lanka by undersea cable link. There is ample trading synergy for India with its neighboring countries in securing its energy requirements. Topic policy framework topic In general, India's strategy is the encouragement of the development of renewable sources of energy by the use of incentives by the federal and state governments. Other examples of encouragement by incentive include the use of nuclear energy India Nuclear Cooperation Promotion Act, promoting wind farms such as Mupandal, and solar energy Ralagon City. A long-term energy policy perspective is provided by the Integrated Energy Policy Report 2006 which provides policy guidance on energy sector growth. Increasing energy consumption associated primarily with activities in transport, mining, and manufacturing in India needs rethinking on India's energy production. Recent steep fall in international oil prices due to shale oil production boom, would tilt the energy policy in favour of crude oil, natural gas. Topic electricity generation topic The installed capacity of utility power plants is 314.64 GW as on 31 January 2017 and the gross electricity generated by utilities during the year 2015-16 is 1,168.359 billion kWh which includes auxiliary power consumption of power generating stations. The installed capacity of captive power plants in industries 1 megawatt and above is 50289 megawatts as on the 31st of March 2017 and generated 197 billion kilowatt hours in the financial year 2016-17. In addition, there are nearly 75,000 megawatts aggregate capacity diesel generator sets with unit sizes between 100 kVA and 1000 kVA. 
All India per capita consumption of electricity is nearly 1,122 kWh during the financial year 2016–17. Total installed power generation capacity end of April 2017. The total installed utility power generation capacity is on 30 April 2017 with sector-wise and type-wise breakup as is given below. Notes, coal includes lignite also, na data not available, the total generation from all renewable energy sources is nearly 15% of the total electricity generation utility and captive in India. Topic energy conservation Topic Energy conservation has emerged as a major policy objective, and the Energy Conservation Act 2001, was passed by the Indian Parliament in September 2001, 35.5% of the population still live without access to electricity. This act requires large energy consumers to adhere to energy consumption norms, new buildings to follow the Energy Conservation Building Code, and appliances to meet energy performance standards and to display energy consumption labels. The Act also created the Bureau of Energy Efficiency to implement the provisions of the Act. In 2015, Prime Minister Mr Modi launched a scheme called Prakash Path urging people to use LED lamps in place of other lamps to drastically cut down lighting power requirement. Energy efficient fans at subsidized price are offered to the electricity consumers by the electricity distribution companies to decrease peak electricity load. Topic rural electrification Topic The key development objectives of the power sector is supply of electricity to all areas including rural areas as mandated in Section 6 of the Electricity Act. Both the central government and state governments would jointly endeavor to achieve this objective at the earliest. Consumers, particularly those who are ready to pay a tariff which reflects efficient costs have the right to get uninterrupted 24 hours supply of quality power. About 56% of rural households have not yet been electrified even though many of these households are willing to pay for electricity. Determined efforts should be made to ensure that the task of rural electrification for securing electricity access to all households and also ensuring that electricity reaches poor and marginal sections of the society at reasonable rates is completed within the next five years. India is using renewable sources of energy like Heidel energy, wind energy, and solar energy to electrify villages. Reliable rural electrification system will aim at creating the following, Rural Electrification Distribution Backbone REDB, with at least 133 kV or 66 kV substation in every block and more if required as per load, networked and connected appropriately to the state transmission system emanating from REDB would be supply feeders and one distribution transformer at least in every village settlement. Household electrification from distribution transformer to connect every household on demand. Wherever above is not feasible, it is neither cost effective nor the optimal solution to provide grid connectivity. Decentralized distributed generation facilities together with local distribution network would be provided so that every household gets access to electricity. This would be done either through conventional or non conventional methods of electricity generation, whichever is more suitable and economical. Non-conventional sources of energy could be utilized even where grid connectivity exists provided it is found to be cost-effective. Development of infrastructure would also cater for requirement of agriculture and other economic activities including irrigation pump sets, small and medium industries, khadi and village industries, cold chain and social services like health and education. Particular attention would be given in household electrification to Dalit Bastis, tribal areas and other weaker sections. Rural Electrification Corporation of India, a Government of India enterprise will be the nodal agency at central government level to implement the program for achieving the goal set by National Common Minimum Program of giving access to electricity to all the households in next five years. Its role is being suitably enlarged to ensure timely implementation of rural electrification projects. Targeted expansion in access to electricity for rural households in the desired time frame can be achieved if the distribution licensees recover at least the cost of electricity and related O&M expenses from consumers, except for lifeline support to households below the poverty line who would need to be adequately subsidized. Subsidies should be properly targeted at the intended beneficiaries in the most efficient manner. Government recognizes the need for providing necessary capital subsidy and soft long-term debt finances for investment in rural electrification as this would reduce the cost of supply in rural areas. Adequate funds would need to be made available for the same through the plan process. 
Also commensurate organizational support would need to be created for timely implementation. The central government would assist the state governments in achieving this. Necessary institutional framework would need to be put in place not only to ensure creation of rural electrification infrastructure but also to operate and maintain supply system for securing reliable power supply to consumers. Responsibility of operation and maintenance and cost recovery could be discharged by utilities through appropriate arrangements with panchayats, local authorities, NGOs and other franchisees etc. The gigantic task of rural electrification requires appropriate cooperation among various agencies of the state governments, central government and participation of the community. Education and awareness programs would be essential for creating demand for electricity and for achieving the objective of effective community participation. The electricity industry was restructured by the Electricity Act 2003, which unbundled the vertically integrated electricity supply utilities in each state of India into a transmission utility, and a number of generating and distribution utilities. Electricity regulatory commissions in each state set tariffs for electricity sales. The Act also enables open access on the transmission system, allowing any consumer with a load of greater than 1 megawatt to buy electricity from any generator. Significantly, it also requires each regulatory commission to specify the minimum percentage of electricity that each distribution utility must source from renewable energy sources. The introduction of availability-based tariff has brought about stability to a great extent in the Indian transmission grids. However, presently it is becoming outdated in a power surplus grid. A report in 2005 suggested that there was room for improvement in terms of the efficiency of electricity generation in India, and suggested that two factors possibly responsible for the inefficiency were public ownership of utilities and low capacity utilization. Topic rural electrification status topic topic Rural households electrification topic Up to 31 December 2016, only 133,177,143 rural households are provided with electricity which is 74% of total 179,231,219 rural households. Topic. See also Topic. Topic. References. Topic. Topic. External links. Topic. Ready reference policy handbook about India at one place. Latest news about Indian power sector at one place. Highlights of Rajasthan Solar Policy 2011 Solar to light up rural India Map of oil and gas infrastructure incomplete India's river linking scheme, a case of troubled waters <laughs>